Welcome to HITC Sport. I'm right, isn't hindsight a wonderful thing? It can make everyone with a football opinion look like they just shouldn't be allowed sharp objects in their house. Give it five years and some opinions, which sound incredible at the time, can suddenly make the person sound like they have cheese strings melted in their brain. For example, Take a look at this comment about a young Manchester United defender in 2004. I reckon this lad can become the best under half of his time. Can we throw him in while Rio was banned? Any, uh, any, any guesses who that was? Jared Piquet, maybe? No, Johnny Evans? No. Paul McShane. Right, so well, that opinion aged about as well as Joey from Friends. I hope the man who wrote it has just been carried off by men in white coats. And given the help that he needs, Christ, well, if that ever gets out, kiss goodbye to your job, wife, and kids. Because honestly, you'll be spending the rest of your life in a loony bin. Replacing Rio with McShane. Yeah, that's like a spinal surgeon thinking that he can just replace a couple of kidneys with actual custard creams. Anyway, today I'm going to take a look at every Premier League's current player who the internet was very wrong about in the past. Right, let's go. Arsenal Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Right, let me take you back to 2013, when Arsenal were first linked with the young Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, who just swapped Saint Etienne for Borussia Dortmund. Arsenal fans love this man now. They gladly let him adopt their firstborn child because this was your first reaction to him. Should have signed Zaha. No thanks. We don't need more mediocrity up front. Thanks. Here we have a guy forecasting Pierre Emerick Aubameyang to be the next Lucas Podolski. Clearly, his judge of talent is well as reliable as Gary Lineker's bowels. Lala, 40 million for PEA. Maybe when he was 10 million in the league, only be well worth a punt. But he is, and it never will be an elite forward. <laughs> no, he's. He's, a, he's just a guy single-handedly won you the FA Cup seven years later. And you just know this is the same guy who probably has posters of Aubameyang on his wall and kisses a lock of his hair every night before bed. Gervinho 2.0. Seriously, he was utterly horrendous for Dortmund this season. Calling Aubameyang Gervinho Mark 2. I, the walking forehead, unable to score from one yard against Bradford. Oh, the only way you could insult all but further is if you said his mother had a face like a mashed potato. I wouldn't touch this guy at that price in five million years. Half that price maybe, but for 29 million, not a chance in the pit of hell. This guy is clearly offended that his club would even consider spending 29 million pounds on a 23 year old Aubameyang. Imagine telling him then that his beloved Arsenal would be spending twice that figure on him when he's nearly 30 years of age. I think his brain would probably have melted out his ears. He's a better well back in my opinion, which also means they are too similar. A better well back? Too similar? No, no, no. The only similarities between Aubameyang and Denny Welbeck is that they're both human beings with functioning kidneys. Lads, they are so far apart in quality, they barely even play the same sport. He's not very good. Walcott level player. We need a few levels above that. 30 million, get out. This one isn't going to happen. He's a stronger, less clinical Walcott. A less clinical Walcott. The only way anyone could be less clinical than Walcott is if they drown their brain in bleach before every match. Don't want. Soldado, on the other hand, is a world class finisher with the ability to play for Arsenal. Arsenal fans once rated Roberto Soldado higher than Aubameyang. Aston Villa, Ross Barkley. Okay, let's get this straight. Ross Barkley is a decent mid-table player who's found his level once again at Villa Park. He's a talented midfielder, but he is in danger of falling into that same mediocre category for the likes of John Joe Shelby. Here's what Man United fans thought about the prospect of signing him in 2013. It would take a solid 50 million pounds, possibly more. If he progresses in a season or two, it may take bail money. 50 million pounds for Ross Barkley. Really? Brighton, Danny Welbeck. Danny Welbeck has had an injury hit career, but I don't care. Even when he was fit, he was not a good finisher. He needed about five attempts to bang in a goal. Anyway, here's what excitable Man United fans thought about him in 2011. I have to say, Welbeck's an incredibly gifted footballer. I expect him to make it at United, possibly in a big way. Oh, that, uh... Nah, that, that one didn't age well. Burnley, Phil Bardsley. Yeah. Same thing here with Phil Barsley at Man United in 2005. I like Barsley. He looks to be a good future prospect. Hopefully Neville's replacement. Phil Barsley, Gary Neville's replacement. No! Chelsea, Tammy Abraham. You drug that? Listen, I rate Tammy Abraham, he's done well, but um... Chelsea fans forecasting him to be the next Drogba back in 2015. The next Drogba. He's a good finisher, but he has the muscle tone of a Capri son. Drogba could probably have bench pressed a cow. Tammy probably hasn't lifted a dumbbell since 2012. Here's the palace Wolford Zaha. Don't rate him or ins from what I've seen. No better than Moses, who is a decent, good, trim quality player, but no more. He's a fusion of Paolo Wanchop and Bebe. Trust me, if either Paolo Wanchop or Bebe attempted the skills that Zaha is capable of, they'd probably break their ankle in six different places. Everton, Dominic Carver-Lewin. This isn't even that long ago. We're just going back 12 months when Man United were linked to the move for Dominic Calvert-Lewin, and it's fair to say their fans weren't on board. We signed this tube, we can forget about success anytime soon. He's Jesse Lingard level. What? Wait, isn't Werner available? Yep, yeah, Timo Werner was available. He since has scored four goals for Chelsea in the league by January. Yes, he scored a tap-in from three yards out against Morecambe, but lads, so would I, so would you. So would a bin man with one broken foot. Definition of average this guy? No, just no. Another niche be in the making. Yeah, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is a better centre forward than the lad you just chucked up front against Burnley the other night. Now don't get me wrong, in his peak, Cavani would use the career of Calvert-Lewin as a floss to clean his teeth, but nowadays, 
DCL is an upgrade. Fulham John 3. Oh, John 3. The guy once did for Barcelona. And now it's just a heavily paid stain left to rot in Fulham's reserves. Here's Man United and Arsenal fans reacting to a potential move in 2017. Really hope we get him. Why haven't we been looking at him for 40 million is beyond me. Oh, lads, be thankful you weren't. Be thankful that your scouts put in a bit more research than Fulham's clearly did. Can't believe this guy is a release cause around 36 million, yet Barca spent that money on Paulinho instead. Whisper quietly, lads. Paulinho is better than John Sarri. Much, much better. Leeds Patrick Bamford. Yes, I realise Patrick Bamford is doing well now. But I don't care. This does not justify the utter lunatic hype given to him by Chelsea fans when he was scoring goals on loan in the Championship at Middlesbrough in 2015. Bamford, the new Rooney. Wayne Rooney is the record goal scorer for both England and Man United. Don't forget what his level was. Yes, I realise he's the face of an expired pumpkin and it's probably banned from every nursing home in the country. But comparing some teenage kid with the muscle tone of a chunk of broccoli to Rooney? What? What? He'll end up being better and more successful than Lukaku. Lukaku is Belgium's record goal scorer, has over 100 Premier League goals, is a current Inter Milan goal machine. Uh, compare that CV to Bamford's. It's like comparing Jake Paul's bank account to mine. Better than Kane, I reckon. He could be a Harry Kane next season if we're brave enough. I promise you, if Chelsea had made Patrick Bamford their number one striker in 2015, not only would Josie Mourinho have been sacked without a fuss, he'd have been given five years in a mental institution. Would love for him to come in and take over from Drogba. Just be named Championship Player of the Year. Incredible talent here. Give him a chance. Let him have Drogba's place. Drogba out, Bamford in. Seems simple, but this is Chelsea. FC. We actually live in a world where Chelsea fans were screaming to the heavens for their club legend, arguably the most important player in the history of the club, an absolute god of Stamford Bridge, to just be binned off in favour of some kid who plays the violin. Just utter disrespect. Lester Jamie Vardy. Remember when Jamie Vardy introduced himself to the world with that shithouse performance and that 5-3 comeback win for Leicester over Man United in September 2014? It's fair to say the United fans weren't too happy with him after that. He's your definitive lowly He'll be forgotten and sent back where players like him belong. It's his 50 minutes of fame. He'll soon disappear into mediocrity just like the other one-game wonders that turned up against United. Bentley, Miss Sud, Kylie, Eastwood. He's a nobody. I'm willing to bet most of you hadn't a clue who he was prior to Sunday. they will return to nothingness this weekend. And then, after keeping Leicester City in the league in 2015, he gets rewarded with an England call-up in 2015, and it's fair to say everyone lost their collective minds. Knowing they're good enough to play for England, I wouldn't even want to play for Ireland. Barney is the closest thing to a pub player in the league. Zero talent, but works hard and puts his weight about. Ridiculous selection. Amongst the worst players ever played for England. Bit embarrassing, really. Five years later, and I bet this guy is one of the people begging Gareth Southgate to talk Vardy out of retirement for the Euros. He's a below average player, good form for a half season side. It won't last very more, Leicester. Bellamy was ten times the player Vardy will ever be. Astonished that there are generally posters in there suggesting we sign him. Christ, he'll disappear the abyss within a few years. Now, five years later, and uh, he's only in the golden boot. Liverpool Virgil van Dijk. Right, here's a mixture of Arsenal and Man United fans showing their reaction to be linked with young Celtic defender Virgil van Dijk about six years ago. I'm giving up football if we sign him. Shows you the ambition we have. He's Villa standard. Here's an Arsenal fan so utterly ashamed at being linked with a guy who'd one day be the best centre half on planet Earth that he was actually threatening to tear up a season ticket in disgust. Decent player, but not United quality. No, of course not. After all, that's a club we've been employing Phil Jones for over a decade. If we're going to buy a defender, we might as well buy someone who will actually improve us. Van Dijk doesn't fit the bill. Would prefer Vlaar as he's probably proven. Would Van Dijk be improved on our current options? I don't think so. Ron You'd prefer Ron Vlar over a young Virgil van Dijk? Would you also prefer to eat your cereal out of a f toilet bowl? He's no Joe Matip. No thanks, I really don't think he's good enough. Reminds me of David Luiz, but not as good. Virgil van Dijk, not as good as David Luiz. Clearly, he's got an eye for a player. Unfortunately, it's a glass eye. Man City, Raheem Sterling. Lads, we only have to go back three years here. When Arsenal fans were turning their noses up at a potential swap deal involving Alexis Sanchez and Raheem Sterling. Would you take pounds plus Raheem Sterling for Alexis Sanchez? Sanchez gets goal guaranteed. Sterling's another walk-off. Sterling is useless. Who would want another walk-off? He's bang average, just more exit version of Redmond. Raheem Sterling is the worst football I've ever seen. No chance whatsoever that's a good deal for us. We don't need any more mentally weak players. Might as well get Trevino back. See, Arsenal fans reacting to the prospect of receiving cash plus a 20 goal a season winger in exchange for a washed up old bag of bones and they're reacting to it as if they've just been told to make love to their pet cat in the middle of a school playground. Man United Phil Jones. Smalling Jones, I like the sound of that. Reminds me a lot of John Terry. The way he moves reminds me so much of Terry, it's uncanny. He'll be better than JT ever was, I'd say. Great signing by Fergie this. Our central defense looks like it's ordered for the next 10 years at least. Please stop the comparisons to John Terry. This is a five-time Premier League winning captain and a Lothario who could probably romance all of his teammates' wives. Jones with a face like that would be lucky to get a hook off Susan Boyle. Comparisons to a young John Terry are an insult to our Phil. What a player. Jones and Smalling are absolutely terrific. Our defense is simply the best in the world. Jones and Smalling, trust me, it's a center back pairing that would make defensive geniuses like Fabio Capella or Jose Mourinho swallow their own vomit. He's gonna be a monster of a player. Well, he's right. Just a shame the monster was Frankenstein. Heard someone say he's the new Duncan Edwards. Is he that good? Rather him than Varan. Yeah, I'm sure you do. And I'd rather eat a bowl of uncooked afterbirth than order a five-star steak sandwich. Newcastle, Sean Longstaff. Yeah, let's rewind 18 months ago when Sean Longstaff, after nine games for Newcastle, was stupidly linked to the 50 million pound move to Old Trafford. Now we know that's ridiculous, but um, Man United fans at the time 
they were swept up with the hype. Yes, but he's watched him once or twice, and he does look like he has lots of potential. You've watched him once or twice. I've watched him 50 times since then. And trust me, after just three weeks of watching him prance around in a Manchester United shirt, you'd probably be getting ready to burn Ed Woodward's house to the ground. It could be a Henderson. So you're all bit long staff will play nearly 400 games for the club and captain you to Premier League and Champions League titles. There's more chance of Beyonce winning the f***ing Ballon d'Or. Hope we sign him. Better get this deal done before the Newcastle takeover happens. It would remind me of the Carrick signing. I'd be very happy with this. I was really impressed by it before he was injured. From all the players to be linked with thus far, long staff would be the best potentially in my opinion. You would be linked with Bruno Fernandes in the summer of 2019. And yet you still thought long staff would be a better signing. Just all her nonsense. Honestly, Sean Longstaff, he's the Jordy Leon Osmond. Sheffield United Jack Rodwell. Well, it's obvious. Bring on the Jack Broadwell to Manchester United hype train back in 2010. Best English talent to emerge last season will be a class player. I reckon he could cost up to 20 million. I'd still pay it. In my opinion, Broadwell's future United player written all over him. Mind you, I thought that about Aaron Ramsey as well. He was right. He was a future United player, except as Sheffield United and Sheffield United's reserve team at that. Considering we're going to sell Fabregas in a few years, we should go from now and bring him up as homegrown. One sensible Arsenal fan preparing for the inevitable departure of Cesc Fabregas, but <laughs> trying to replace a Barcelona-bound, World Cup winning superstar with Jack Rodwell. Complete and utter nonsense. Southampton Theo Walker. Oh, this one's gonna be, this one's gonna be good. Here's a few comments from January 2006. When Arsenal fans were sweating over whether or not they were gonna beat Chelsea in the race, they're signing 16 year old Theo Walker from Southampton. As if he was some kind of future Thierry Henry. I pray we sign him. This is a testing time for Wenger. Who knows, maybe we'll put an offer for 25 million if Chelsea's offer is accepted. We need to get Walker or the club will regret it for life. Really? Allowing Chelsea to sign Theo Walker in 2006? This guy acts like he'll be the start of Armageddon? A decision that Arsenal fans regret until the day they die? You know what I love about this is that Barca have Messi, Real have Rabin and we'll have Teo. It's like the big three. Messi, Rabinho, and Teo Walcott. <laughs> the big three. No, no. That would soon be Messi, Ronaldo, and Neymar. Not uh, Teo Walcott, who's now back at Southampton at 31 years of age. But I completely agree. Messi is indeed a wonderful footballer, but to say that Walcott is not as good, I believe is vastly premature. I'll stop you there. Walcott should never ever be mentioned in the same breath as Lionel Messi. I'd much prefer I walk out than Ribery. Then you have a brain made of ready Breck. Tottenham Harry Kane. All the fans absolutely adore Harry Kane, right? The man's gonna get a statue outside the stadium. You've always had faith that he come good, right? Just just roll the clips. Kane is awful, his touch is awful, his finishing is awful, he looks embarrassing playing half the time. How, how stupid must this guy feel right now? Harry Kane is now your king. Probably your greatest striker since Jimmy Greaves. And um... This was your first impression of the man? Sorry guys, I still don't think he's good enough. If he's the answer, then we are asking the wrong question. I like him, but if we have ambitions to get to the top, he needs to be upgraded. I'm okay with it being third choice. I'd be worried if he was second choice. I'd be worried if I saw you behind the wheel of a car. I'm sorry, the fact is Kane is a championship player. The club is wasting his time persisting with him. Yeah, for all those first times pretending that you always saw Kane's potential in the other 21s. No, no, have you clearly thought he was Millwall standard? The next Grant Holter, Daryl Murphy. I know he's homegrown English Spurs fan, etc., but no room for sentiment. He really is not good enough. Well, I guess that's final then. Harry Kane is not good enough for Spurs. Well, from Charlie Austin. Here's the talk about Charlie Austin in 2012. When Liverpool were linked with the move for the Burnley striker. That deal may keep Brendan Rodgers at Liverpool. Yes, I'm pretty sure partnering Luis Suarez with Charlie f***ing Austin from Burnley would have saved Rodgers' job at Anfield. No, instead it would probably put him at serious risk of having a brick chuck through his window. West Ham Mark Noble. Cracking little player covers every blade of grass on the pitch and his quality to boot. Only 21 as well. Should get at least 30 England caps by the time he's done. Let me put it this way. Noble looks just as good as Lampard and Carrick did at 21. I like his set pieces. Not many better in the game. As good as Lampard, as as good as Car as good as Lampard, Mark Noble. And we ask anyone else in the comments below, what do you think? What was your stupid opinion you once had? Let me know in the comments below. Join the video, don't forget to subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.